Hello, welcome or welcome back to Reads of an Apple. My name is Stacy, and I'm here to start week three of 2023. If you watched last week's vlog, yes, I'm in the same getup. I am in the same position. I am just filming this right away. It is Saturday just before 6.30. The Avalanche game is on and I was filming an update clip during the first intermission and since I'm all set up I figured I might as well do my weekend clip so I won't have too much reading updates just because it is Saturday. Um, things are going. I have less than a week till moving date. This week will it'll be this coming Friday so the last day of this week's vlog will be moving day. Hopefully I'll, I'll try to keep on par with filming at least every other day for my clips for this week, but who knows, things might get kind of crazy, but thankfully most of my stuff is already packed and I got a good chunk packed up today that were like Christmas gifts or little things that I've been using or stuff that I had extra of, like I had two things of shampoo because I didn't know how quick I'd go through it and so all like the little extra stuff like that I got packed up but most of what I have to pack is clothes so I'm just like what am I not gonna wear what I mean I always choose what to wear randomly when I get up in the morning and half the days I wear freaking avalanche jerseys so I might just throw all my clothes in a laundry basket and just tote them over but I have a couple duffel bags I already filled of stuff I know I won't um wear like I like I packed up most of my socks I left just a few socks and stuff like that but anyway um, so sorry for the mess of myself and everything else, but it's been a busy day. Woo! And the apps just scored. Nice. They're up 3 nothing, which is great. Um, book stuff first, and then we will do the quest calendar. I did finally start Friday night, and I was gonna wait longer to read this, but my, uh, Libby checkout expires somewhat soon and because I haven't moved yet I don't have my physical copy but I finally started uh, Crescent City 1 House of Earth and Blood. I am now 41% through and I'm enjoying this so far. I... Mm. I wish somebody would have warned me going in not to get too attached to any characters in the beginning because let me tell you, I was here for Connor and, oh, Danica, I loved Danica and her little pack. Oh my gosh. And I was bawling like a baby when we get to what happens to them. And this is in part one. This is like a hundred pages in. I'm thinking we're gonna have 600, 700 pages with these people. I'm already like loving them as the friend group that's gonna be around these people. And I was just bawling my eyes out and so upset when I got to the end of part one. So, and I also wasn't 100% unsure with the whole, like, party girl vibe where they're doing drugs and they're drinking. And I was like, this is a different vibe for a Sarah J. Moss character. And they're not in college anymore. So, I wasn't quite sure. I wasn't quite on board with some of that stuff. Just because I am very much a person who, I've never been drunk. I've never done drugs. I tried a weird cigarette cigar thing <laughs> once, but I don't know. I, that's just never been my vibe. I was always the DD for all my friends and yeah, but anyway, um, I'm enjoying this. I am enjoying Hunt. I love Hunt and I am a big fan of her brother Rune I'm guessing is how you say it and I am like picking up little things and I'm like ooh is that Aquatar? Is it Aquatar? And but I don't because it's still also new to me I like I'm like second guessing myself on if these things are actually related to each other or not so I cannot wait for the live show and this is why I try to read this book as close to the live show as I can so I can keep things fresh but like I said my library checkout was expiring so I needed to pick it up and I knew it was going to be a log book but I am enjoying myself so much with this. 
part two, oh my gosh, my heart breaks, breaks so much for I'm losing her name, Bryce, and just the grief that she's gone through and the trauma that she's gone through. I mean, and then having one of her friends stop talking to her and I'm like, what the hell is going on with Fury? Why is she talking to the other friend, the fawn, but not to Bryce? Poor, and like Bryce is the one who almost died. Oh, so I, I, oh, but I'm loving the like antagonistic, like they want to be close, but things happened relationship that she has with Rune and I'm loving the vibe between her and Hunt. I am obsessed with the fire pixie, the guards, um, the the library in the basement of the antiquity shops that she works at. I love her to pieces. She's this sassy little fire pixie and I, I love her to death. Syrinx, her little chimera pet, who's technically free, but he just loves Bryce, so he's hanging out with her all the time. I just... <sighs> all I have to say. Syrinx better be like Fleetfoot and he's like the only character that is the, that will be left alone. <laughs> I cannot like I'm I got so attached to these characters so quickly which is weird for me. Um I do have to say it was a little info dumpy when we got to all the houses and I do wish that they were a little more naturally we learned about the different houses and maybe just have them mention that there's blah 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 houses. So there was a little bit of like info dumpiness in the very beginning and explaining how the city is laid out and all the different areas. But then once we kind of got past that and then we see Bryce naturally exploring all of these different places, I'm like, okay. And so all of that in the beginning just kind of went in one ear out the other. But now that we're actually like she's visiting places like the meat market and things like that, I'm very interested. Oh, and one other thing, um, Connor's little brother, the little brother that plays Sunball. I think it was Connor's little brother when he texts her after it all and when they used to be such good friends and he's like nobody wants to see you basically during the funeral for Danica and everybody my heart was breaking for Bryce because this poor girl went through probably the most traumatic thing that she's ever been through, especially up to that point. And then two, two years, almost two years later, where we are now in part two, still is the most traumatic thing she's been through. And she's practically abandoned by everybody. I mean, her par her mom and her stepdad come up and she still has a relationship with um, the other friend who's a fawn ballerina. <sighs> But the fact that she doesn't dance anymore, she doesn't drink anymore, and, you know, she still plays off that party girl persona as a way to kind of manipulate people around her. But manipulate kind of is more of a negative term of what she's kind of doing. But it took me a little bit to really connect with Grace, or Bryce. I don't know why I just called her Grace, but I'm... I'm all in for Bryce now. She's not my favorite heroine. She's not the type of heroine that I connect with the most, but I I am rooting for her for sure. And I am hoping I can finish it sometime soon. My plan is to hopefully get through at least 60, 70-ish percent by the end of the weekend and then I can spend the rest of the week kind of working on it and it's the ebook that I'm currently on. Um, I do want to pick up another audiobook, but I just don't know what I want to pick up next. So I have not picked up an audiobook yet from my Hoopla or Libby. So today while I was doing stuff, I just went with catching up on a couple of podcasts I have. But let me not ramble on too long and let's do the quest calendar. So if you have not seen any of my weekly vlogs, I am playing the quest calendar. It is created by Sundial Games. It is a daily page calendar where we are playing a game that is d20 based. Think Dungeons and Dragons. 
Pathfinder, D20, anything like that. This year's theme is the Void Spark Chronicles, and it is a space opera sci-fi based. Okay. So we are currently in the prologue, and we are playing as this autonomous neural drone infrastructure called Andy. So this is the character that we are playing through the prologue, and the stat sheet is on the back here. And yeah, so we are escaping from the lab where we were like creative, and there's a rebellion happening outside so that's interesting on friday last week we started to escape in the ship and we saw um the admiral and doctor kind of arguing when we were trying to escape so i'm thinking one of them's with the rebellion and one or one of them's just for science and the other one is under the thumb of whatever governing people but let's see what happens today we also set up our stats for our ship, so I think we're going to start learning some ship combat -y stuff. Um, oh, I should go over. If you have not seen the quest calendar before, all of this script-like text is the story that we read out. Anything that is block text, usually highlighted in this box. Um, it's either on the side or on the bottom. This is the mechanics that we will do to play through today's portion of the story. If there's a combat, there's usually a little table on the picture that says how many rounds, how many creatures, what type of rolls we'll have to make. And then all of the information that we need is on the back of the previous day's page. So let's see for today. Okay, so yep, it looks like we are going to kind of learn how to do the ship skill checks, I guess, and how to do stuff with the ship. So you drop the ship out of the hangar and immediately must engage in space combat as other spacecraft begin to fire on you. Great, but this is how we're going to learn how to do our space stuff. Engage in ship combat, roll the dice indicated on the table. Your aim and evasion modifiers were determined yesterday and they were on Friday. So we will have to roll D100s for aim and evasion. So let me get my dice out here. Okay, so if you are new to role playing games, when it means a D100, it means you have your percentile dice plus your D10. So together they make your 10th digit and your first digit of the zeros on here. R100, um, but that is with this. So if you roll a 10 on the D10 and a zero, a zero, zero on the D100, your percentile die, that is 100. If you roll the zero, zero and then like a lower number, that is like the tens. So, or before, like below 10. So, that is how the D, uh, D100 or percentile dice work. There is actually a D100 out there. I do not own one, <laughs> but I have seen one. My friends have one. So let us just kind of see what, what we're going to have to do. This is the first time that we've had to do any ship stuff. So I'm excited for this. So engage in ship combat. So we will need to roll aim first move the quest calendar here so yeah so we will have to roll our aim first so and we have a plus 10 that is what we rolled on friday and that is a 95 so we're at 105 okay if your aim roll is 40 or more your shot hits and you take no damage Perfect. So then on to number two. So we will roll once again. And that is a, wow, 99. Okay. Um, let me just, yeah, that is a nine and that one. Okay. 69. My bad. Um, so we're at 79 with our plus 10. 
Um, if your aim roll is 60 or more, your shot hits and you take no damage. Okay. Sweet. So that is it. That's all we have to do today. Um, it's super simple. So just those two ships that we engaged with and that is it. So I will see you on Monday. Um, because I don't know if you did not notice Saturdays and Sundays are combined on the quest calendar and I will most likely have some reading updates to make and things like that. Um, since Monday, we have all day tomorrow still. Um, I'll go through those in a minute. I also do also want to touch base. I was able to finally figure out um, my computer cannot handle at this moment the capabilities of doing a tiny video on top of another video, which is what I was trying to do with my contemporary favorites, is so you guys could actually see me in a tiny little screen in the corner while the big screen is me filling out my brackets, but I'm guessing that's what the issue is. I tried doing a couple other videos and exporting them. Things went fine, went back to that one, exported it as is, and it got to like 20 minutes left exporting and my computer crashed again. And I was just like, you made it all the way to the end and it did it. And then I tried exporting it again because I thought, okay, I'll redo things. I deleted it, restarted it, kind of shrunk things down even more just in case that's what the issue was. And it died like 20 minutes into exporting that time. So I just was like, ah, so I moved on. And then I tried doing it by just separating the audio from my the video of me and imposing that over my screen capture video and it exported. So my February's are a week late later than I originally mentioned earlier this month. So uh, this coming Tuesday from when I'm filming it, but previously you can see my favorites of 2022 for contemporary. And now that I I know that I can just kind of try to film um, the rest of them as I can because they don't take very long and get some stuff prepped. I also got this weekend's video and that Tuesday video out. I've got uh, my weekly two ready to export tonight when I go to bed. So I'm tr and I got um, I actually was able to take some time today as well um, during the first part of the avalanche game and I got the final three weeks I have left of 2022 to upload, all of them are edited. So I just have to export them when I'm not working on a different video and then I can upload them and try to fit them in wherever I can to finish out my 2022 videos that were supposed to be up in 2022 outside of week 52 that was supposed to go up the first week of January. But I'm catching up. I'm feeling good about things. I'm feeling good about this week. Um, so yeah. Oh, and then I also did want to mention, because I totally spaced it earlier, the opening clip for this was the spring order that we got at work. Um, we've already gotten one other spring order, but it was for Kawasaki. So we just, it was just Kawasaki, but this is from our big distributor where we get three, four, five, six at least six different brands from. So this is our big one. It was a three palleter, two pallets were tires, which was super fun. And what's scary is we ordered nowhere near as much this year as we do in the past. It took less time to get it all sorted and put away this year than it has in the past. And that is mind boggling because it was still three pallets and we have another one coming that my boss said we got notification of and that one is also just a one person but that one has a lot of bulky stuff that's our colder order so that's all of our almost all of our air filters and our electric starters and there's a lot in that one and that's just one brand and we still have a couple other to do 
and fill out and submit and so it's it's just that time of year and if we get another big one maybe I'll film it just so you can see the craziness that what we get for our spring orders our red max one is usually huge but we get a lot of our handheld equipment from them so that also comes with our parts palettes and then it comes with a couple other palettes of like backpack blowers and string trimmers and backpack sprayers and then all the other little handheld equipment that we can get from them and that's always another crazy palette or so anyway I just wanted to let you know what that clip was to start the weekly vlog since I forgot to mention it earlier but I will see you on Monday hello I did it again I did it again happy Wednesday Oh man, I just, this week, these past couple weeks, these past, well, these past few months have been crazy and oh, it is first in a mission of the Avs game. They are playing Calgary tonight. They are up three nothing, but I was like, I should film the clip because I meant to film the clip last night and I was like, okay, I'm almost done with a house. Of Earth and Blood, Crescent City number one by Sarah J. Moss for the SJM along. I want to say like the last 20, maybe the last 15, 20, 15 percent. Just crying, crying mess. And as soon as I'd like stop crying, I was bawling again for somebody else or something else happening. And I just, the end of that book destroyed me. I don't know what I'm going to do when I read Nesta's book next month. <laughs> I just, oh, I loved Crescent City. I loved Crescent City. Five stars, five freaking amazing stars. It, oh, it was so good. So good. But yeah, so when I finished that, I was not. I couldn't stop for a good while. I just had to sit there with my eyes closed and just be like, it's okay. They made it through. It has a, it has a happy for now there. Everybody is fine, but not everybody is fine because there were people who died. Uh, and I just had to like recenter myself. And I think, I mean, if I did not have something that I will be showing you shortly, which I will be picking up tonight, I probably would be in a book hangover right now. And I can't wait to read the next book in this series as well. Um, but let's backtrack and talk about all the books that I've read since I last updated you on Saturday, because I was really good this weekend at getting my first vlog clip done early, and now it's been several days, so... I have a note somewhere. Here we go. Okay, so I needed an audiobook over the weekend um, while I was kind of packing stuff up. If you noticed, things are super empty. It's super weird. Friday is moving day. And yesterday slash early this morning, we got nine inches of snow. At least the, what was on the dumpster at work was just over nine inches when I measured. So yeah, that was fun great fun which means it's probably not gonna be melted all by Friday which is annoying but thankfully I have ground floor apartment so we don't have to try to be trekking stuff up and down potentially ice covered stairs and the roads were pretty good the the city was really good um, yesterday on the way to work it didn't start snowing until like 5 30 ish it started to kind of spit but they were already pre-spraying all the streets and one of the big city plow trucks actually followed me to work and I was like, great, and it's like almost nine o'clock. So they were out spraying all day, prepping as much as they can. And so most of the streets are were pretty good on my way home, except for the HOA where my brother lives. <laughs> I came around that corner to a hill that goes down to where the nature reserve is, which is at the edge of the HOA. And it was just ice and I come I was like ah but it was fine everything's fine I just freaked myself out <sighs> okay 
But anyway, so this weekend I picked up Coming Up Roses by Stacey Hart. This is the first book in her Bennett Brothers series. I've been wanting to read a Stacey Hart for a while. I did not think this would be the first book I would pick up, but it was. And I loved it. It was amazing. And yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, it was great. Um, I gave it 4.5 stars because there was some other woman drama. However, this series, if you could not tell from the series titles, is uh, Pride and Prejudice retellings-ish. And this book is Tess and Luke. And Luke is gender swapped. I just lost her name, the young daughter. It starts with the now. The one that marries Cap the captain. And I look like I don't know Pride and Prejudice right now, but I do. I promise I watch that movie so much. And I've watched the other versions of the movie so much. I still have not seen the BBC TV version, but... Oh my gosh, what? Is her, I can't remember her name. Okay, I will be back because it will drive me nuts. I just asked my Lexi. Lydia. It is Lydia. <laughs> But yeah, um, this was great. So in this series, the Bennett family owns a floral shop. It's a set in New York City. And they are working on... All the kids kind of find out that um, financially the family business isn't doing too hot. Most of them have just kind of been living off their inheritance trust fund checks that get deposited from the profits of the business every month. And so they all kind of come back to help save the flower shop. So this is book one. And this Tess um, has known the family forever. She's worked at the floral shop forever. And this is kind of ish mutual pining, slightly ish enemies to lovers, enemies on her end, because she's butt hurt because there was a time shortly after her mom passing in high school that she had a talk with Luke and they kissed. It was magical. And he told her he wanted her to basically be his girl and that this was just too perfect. And we come to find out later he was completely drunk off his butt and forgot the entire thing. And the next morning he shows up to the shop and starts kissing Tessa's friend who works also works at the shop who also is Luke's uh on and off again hookup <laughs> so she has been like a broken hearted pining bitter person towards Luke since that whole issue came about and it's them kind of being working together and opening up about some of these things and she's still kind of really struggling with moving on with her mom and there were some things that really kind of spoke to me of not maybe issues that I'm still going through, but issues that I've had to deal with about, you know, getting rid of my mom's things doesn't mean I'm getting rid of her. And it's it's been hard and I definitely get more than I probably should have. But, you know, as time goes on, it'll be easier to let some of those other things go. But... The memories will always be my memories, but it was, it was just, I don't know. I've really enjoyed it. 4.5 stars. I only dropped it because of the other woman drama and I, while I understand why I'm not the big fan of other woman drama, but I didn't like the way that Luke handled some of the other women drama, especially when it came to it being the third act conflict because it is his ex-wife. So no matter what, there, I mean, there's always kind of going to be that thing because it was, it's not just an ex-girlfriend. It's an ex-wife who's mentally unstable, who's had substance abuse issues in the past, potential suicide, either threats or manipulation attempts. And he still cares for her as a person and he doesn't want to hurt herself by not talking to her. And that's also another hard thing to kind of work through and realize that you can't save this other person if this is what they're set on doing, but then they're also manipulating you and using this horrible thing to 
manipulate you. So that's the only reason I knocked it down. But overall, I really enjoyed it. The audiobook was great fun. And I got it from my Hoopla. But there's that. I talked way too long about it than I expected. But it's fine. It is what it is. So for all of my readathons and reading challenges that are going on, let's do this. So for Winter's Kiss number two, board number, bingo board number two, I use this for office romance because tech, it's not like an office, office, but it's a work romance. So I'm counting it as office romance because they fall in love again while working at the flower shop. They also get it on all the time and only at the flower shop because they're both still living at home because her dad lost his legs. Um, he was a soldier and so she's still living with her father to take care of them. And then he, because he's back in town and he was um, living with his ex-wife in California and then he came back in time to help with the business. So he's staying with his parents. So <laughs> the only like alone time they get is when they're hanging out in the storage area of the shop. Which was kind of weird, but whatever. Um, for a Starbucks quarterly challenge, I use this for Nitro Cold Brew. This is a one of the options. This is a three-word title. This also worked for the New to You Author Challenge. So I have officially met my minimum for January to participate in the challenge, which is super fun. And I know I have a couple more on my planned TBR. This also worked for Read What You Own because it was a library book. For No Resolution January, this was a uh, read a book that's not on your official TBR. And then for uh, Guildathon, I used this for the alloy option, which is pick up a book that's two subgenres, two tropes kind of mashed together. And so this is an office romance and it's a retelling. So because it's a Pride and Prejudice retelling, which is super fun. So I read that via audiobook. Then Sunday night, I started the, I have it sitting over here in my pile, graphic audio and I read the physical version of Clean Sweet by Alona Andrews. Five stars. Five amazing stars. If you have not read Inkeeper Chronicles, this, this is the funniest, like they always have good humor. This is the funniest Alona Andrews book I have ever read. I was laughing so much throughout this book. It is so well done. This is a sci-fi fantasy paranormal mishmash, but I'm calling it sci-fi because most of it's dealing with other worlds. And, and while there are paranormal creatures, they are from other worlds. So it's one of those mixy ones. So fun. Uh, the graphic audio was amazing. It definitely was very long for how short this book is. It's only like 230 pages and the audiobook's like six hours. <laughs> but I had so much fun because it was a graphic audio. The voices were amazing. We just get a very tiny spark and a kiss here for the romance, but I'm excited to see it bloom. I know this one quite isn't as romance heavy as Hidden Legacy from them, but... Oh, this was so good. It was amazing and it was so much fun. And because I read it early and I I still have like a week until the live show, it's not till next Friday. I listen I re-listened to the Smart Woman Read Romance podcast episode about it, and I was just like, yes, exactly. And I mean I was kind of fish talking to him, but I was mostly just listening to him and then like emphatically agreeing in my head. It, it just, it was great. It was amazing. And I cannot wait to read more in this series. And I'm really hoping that by the time we get to the most recent book that just came out, that the graphic audio will be out for that because I want graphic audios for everything. And yeah, I just, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, basic... <laughs> premise. Um, this is Dina and she is an innkeeper, which means that she has a kind of ish magical symbiotic relationship with inns. And this inns are basically 
hotels, but they're catered to um, creatures and beings that are traveling either to Earth for some reason, or they're on their way somewhere else, and Earth is like a layover place, so it is a safe place for them to stay. The inn is magical. She has magic. We've got a werewolf, who I'm team werewolf, and I'm pretty sure it's team werewolf. And we're not actually doing a love triangle, but it's kind of teased in the end that it may or may not be a love triangle, but I've heard it isn't, which I'm fine with. But I just, we got vampires. And what I absolutely love is that vampires and werewolves come from different planets, but the way that the lore and like normal... I don't know, rules that we think on Earth for these things are explained because it's some sort of phys physiological aspect for what happens to, like, the vampires in this. Like, a lot of the vampire myths are explained just because they are alien and they are so different. And we in our little human brains comprehended it in a way that we could understand instead of for what it was. So, like, they're dead and they sleep in coffins. No, when they're waiting for somebody to come pick them up, what they're able to do is put themselves in, like, a stasis coma type thing. And then, so they aren't found in this vulnerable state, they'll usually bury the pods that they're, like, sleeping in so they aren't found outside of people who can, like, track and know where their pods are. And so, <laughs> it's just, like, little things like that. And I five stars and I highly recommend the graphic audio. It was great. I, yeah, the only thing I noticed in the graphic audio that was really pulled out was mostly brand names. So like there's mention that she's wearing like a Hello Kitty sweater or she's doing, or when they do, when they fight the stalker in the Costco and the other woman who's helping Dina uh, destroys her with Bush's baked beans. They just called it canned baked beans or something like that. So a lot of the brand name stuff was removed, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. There were a couple of dialogue lines dropped or a cup and then a, a, some of the more descriptive text dropped because it's either happening in the background, like somebody's growling or somebody's huffing or somebody's sighing and things like that. But that's because it doesn't need to be said by our characters because it's just actual noise or something that's happening in the background. So yeah, I loved it. Five, five stars. Yeah, five stars. Um, and I cannot wait to read more on the series. Oh, four, my reading challenges. Let's talk about those real quick. So for Winter's Kiss, I use this for one person on the cover. For my, this also worked for Read What You Own Reading Challenge because I physically owned it, plus I used it for the library, which both work for it, but I'm only counting it as one. Um, for No Resolution January, I used this for Read a Book from the Pile by Your Bed because I put my TBR books um, there, which kind of fish by my bed, but those are the ones I usually keep out. For Gildason, I used this for the technical prompt, which is uh, a sci-fi book or with advanced technology. And then for the Starbucks reading challenge, I actually just changed it. So I'll have to look at my note here of what I changed it from. If I can find which note it is, because I have, I'm surrounded by notes. So I'm using this for Caramel Burlay Latte. I guess I'll put it back up. Caramel Burlay Latte. And one of the options for that is set in the summer or hot climate. And this is set in the summer of Texas. So I would say that works. Yeah, so there is Clean Sweet. Um, then the next book I finished was House of Earth and Blood. This worked for my Yahtzee prop for the month. I rolled fives at the beginning of the month. And that is either the fifth book in a series or a title with five let or with five words. So it worked for that. Like I said, five stars, five amazing freaking stars. And I hope I remember all of these things for when the live show happens at the end of the month. I try not to read things so early, but I had to, but my ex, my checkout was expiring from the library. So I just read it via ebook <sighs> and I finished it and bawled my eyes out. Like I said, 
Um, but for Winter's Kiss number two, I use this for a bookstore rec because SJM is a reader darling. I feel like everywhere, Booksta, YouTube, whatever you want to follow. Um, for Starbucks, I use this for iced brown sugar oat milk shaken espresso. <laughs> One of the options for that is a story you think will leave you shaken up, and this book did leave me shaken up. And then it also works for Read What You Own. Not only did I check this out from the library, but I do own a physical copy of it. It is just packed away. <sighs> then for no resolution January this worked for read a book with a color on the cover and then and then I'm gonna use this for BFS house for romanceopoly so we will have to do our new row so I will at the end of when I'm done filming this clip I'll pull out my bingo board or not my bingo board, my game board, and we'll do the new roll. But <sighs> Bryce and Hunt become friends. They, they're like working together, then they become friends, and then they become lovers. Although technically we didn't see them do some official loving, but they've fallen in love with each other, and we got some hot steamy times, just not all the way steamy times than I. So I'm gonna count it and I put it on the back in permanent marker so hopefully it won't wipe off. So my first official romance hobbily book is done, which is great. But yeah, so there is that. Now, I picked up another audiobook because I just wanted something. So I actually started it late last night and um, I listened to it a lot today at work and on my drive to and from work because I was just taking it slow with all the snow on the roads. So I started Riv's Sanctuary by A.G. Wild. I hope I got that cracked. If not, I'm sorry. It's on the cover. Um, and this is weirdly another like zookeeper alien thing. So I don't know how I found two of those in a row, but yeah. And I'm enjoying it. I'm like 56, 57 percent through. I got this from Hoopla. I was thinking I needed to find more sci-fi books for the month and I don't. <laughs> but I picked, I found it a, I spent forever looking for sci-fi audiobooks that were also romances on Hoopla. And I found a couple but they're from authors that I have kind of ish stopped reading. And so I went with this one because it's a new to me author, which is great. And yeah, so this is Lauren and she has, when we come, to, like when the book starts, she has been captured over a year. Um, it's been a year-ish plus maybe a very tiny minus, but she was captured and sold to a zookeeper and she has basically spent the last year of her life as an exhibit in this alien zoo and she you get from the reader's perspective you can kind of tell that uh something is going on with humans human and because the zookeeper suddenly has to get rid of her really quickly he's gonna sell her to the first bidder um some weird little alien ends up uh, buying her and he's buying her as a mate, as like a third party person to join him and his mate when they're in the bedroom. And his mate thinks she's absolutely horrendous. So he is trying to figure out where to send her. They keep calling her a pet. Like she is not seen as an intelligent human being. And he decides to give him to his, uh, friend Riv who owns a animal sanctuary and he kind of wheels and deals him <laughs> with Riv not kind of knowing what's going on and he takes in Lauren only to find out that she's not an animal she is a sentient being and yeah so they just got his translator uploaded with her 
um, with er, with uh, English. <laughs> so this entire time, he's just been like, she's talking all of the time. He is so grumpy. He's just like, she's a woman and she's talking constantly and I can't understand what she's saying. And he's constantly like, oh my gosh, I can smell her. She's been in this room and oh, she's still talking. <laughs> Who was she talking to? She's talking to my dog. Like, why is she talking so much? And she's just lonely. She hasn't had anybody to talk to. I mean, a dog or otherwise and <laughs> so I'm enjoying it it's it's fun I'm glad I feel like the miscommunication not knowing each other's language thing went on a little too long for my preference but I feel like this is a longer I haven't looked at what the official page count is because this is an audio but the audiobook's just over eight hours so I think this is probably a 300-ish page book but yeah, that's my only like really big detractor so far is that we spent too long with the first zookeeper alien and then we spent a while with the second alien who bought her from the zookeeper and now we're on Riv and we got to Riv at like 30% which was a little longer than I prefer and now we're at almost 60% and he just now is able to understand her but we'll see things might amp up really quickly from here. Um, so yeah, I'm listening to that audiobook. And then tonight, after the Avalanche game is done, I plan on picking up this beauty that showed up today. It came day late. It came day after release day, but I am so excited. I was just like, ah! making all sorts of sounds that I was talking to my boss and I'm like I'm so excited for this book and I'm like it's so cozy it's so fun to go back to these people and she's just like oh. and I'm like I know it's just a book but it makes me so happy and I'm like think of your favorite show what if you just found out that your favorite show your comfort show is getting a new season and she's like no I get it <laughs> and I'm just like I'm sorry <sighs> But yeah, I plan on reading this tonight. I am super duper excited. It is, I haven't even read the blurb in the back, but it is just under 150 pages. So I will probably be able to read this all tonight, depending on how long the Avalanche game goes. They're almost halfway through the second period now. So we will see what happens, but I cannot wait to read this. But, and the live show for this is on Monday. So I need to at least, at the very least, pick it up this weekend. And it might be a good first book to read in my new place. But I want to read it now. So yeah, there's that. Um, as for other books <laughs> that I have a little mini haul to show you with. Um, the other book that released on Tuesday was... The Backup Plan by Jill Chavez. This is the third book in her Sunrise Cove series, which I still need to read. And book four is coming out in June. I already got my pre-order pre -order done for book four. Uh, so yeah, um, I need to read this. I need to read this. And I need to get back to my Lucky Harbor reread. But yeah. I'm excited to have this. Let's look, there's another little doggy. It's pretty. It gives all the good wintry vibes. And then I placed a thrift folks order. I was trying not to order anything outside of pre-orders I already have. Because it was like close enough that I was like, if it comes here quick, I don't want it. I don't know if there's somebody still at the apartment right now or how long, like when the, how the turnover is happening there. So I was trying really hard not to order books, but then I got an email from thrift books that's like, Hey, you have some free books credits that are expiring in like two days. And I was like, dang it. So I placed an order. So I got, I got several free books and then I got enough to get my free shipping, which is like $10 or whatever you have to get. But I was debating on who to get. And I was like, I know who I need to get. I ordered a bunch of Mary Jo Putney books. So I used a lot of my free books to get Mary Jo Putney's and I hope I get the ones with step backs, but let's see. So, and I hope they're in good condition. Some of them I had to go a little lower than I typically go, but I'm hoping that they're still okay. So here is, oh my 
gosh, Thunder and Roses, look. Look at the peacock. Oh my gosh. It is, I mean, it's it only has like those two big cracks, which is decent, and it's like shiny. And look, there's more peacocks, and it does have a step back. Let's see. Ooh, oh, those are almost like Amanda Quick esque. We got a soother dancing. Oh my gosh, that is so fun. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I keep saying this, and I haven't seen anybody. If you know Mary Jo Putney, if you've seen a guide to Mary Jo Putney, if you know where I need to look to know where to start with Mary Jo Putney, please let me know. Ah! And I almost dropped this book. So here is Dancing on the Wind. This one is like pretty lace. Ooh. He's getting naked. And... Oh, that's weird. That dude? It's not that dude. Ooh. This dude is... The only thing he has clothes on is his sleeve. Otherwise, he is bug naked. Wow. That is gorgeous. That is... Wow. Look at her hair. Okay. That's exciting. So good so far. Here is Shattered Rainbows. Ooh. They're all, they're all upside down, so I'm just seeing the back. Look at that. That's on seagulls. That makes me think of my grandma. I love the hollow. And let's see what the... I don't know what's going on here, but okay. Okay. We've got like a water cave going on and it looks like they're in like a little hot tub, hot spring kind of situation. Okay. Okay. I have no idea what any of these are about. And then the last one in this package is silk and shadows. Ooh, another shiny one, another bird. And we got lilies. And the step back on this one. Oh. oh. Oh, interesting. She's got a fan. I'm just going to show you why I freaked out. I ended up with a double step back. <laughs> what is that sorcery? What is that sorcery? I got okay okay this one ooh is super duper cracked but you know I'll forgive it for the double freaking step back that's cool all right that's fun so yeah I should have um I think it's two other packages are coming um and I had them all shipped to my work because I didn't know what was going on um so yeah, so that is my little mini haul, um, books, haul, <sighs> and other exciting news, because I got a bunch of videos pre-filmed and uploaded, I'm good through next Tuesday, which is awesome, which is the previous Tuesday, then you're watching this, but I, I'm hoping to kind of pre-film and finish what I can as soon as I can so that I can kind of just have to focus on my weekly vlogs the rest of the month which is super nice but I also got weeks 50 51 and 52 from 2022 exported which always is the longest part so at some point I just have to kind of figure out where I want to put them in my schedule and go from there but that's exciting that I'm like that much closer to getting completely cut up and done with my 2022 stuff outside of my favorites brackets those are still in the works but yeah so I'm going to grab my dice here because we have a quest calendar to do so when I last left you on Saturday uh, we were trying to escape on this little ship so let's see what's going on today Okay, so it looks like we have more ship maneuvers, and these are the 
character sheets that I've been using. I just kind of stuck them in there because I didn't know what else to do. Okay, so it looks like we've got more ship stuff to try to escape. You continue to maneuver through the hectic nightmare of this dogfight. Some of the rebellion ships spot you trying to leave the station and give chase. You witness an explosion on the station and hope that Dr. Latimer made it out safely. Okay, so we will have four ships that we have to deal with. So we'll have to roll a D100 for aim and a D100 for evasion. So let me... Okay, so this is the sheet for today. This is our normal character sheet, and this is our ship character sheet. So, let me grab my DU-100s. All right. All right. Let's just get into it. So, our for aim, we have a plus 10, and for evasion, we have a plus 15. Okay, so for aim, we have 68. So, 78. If your aim roll is 40 or more, your shot hits and you take no damage. Okay, on to ship number two. This one is 76, so that's 86. This one is 60 or more to hit, so that's great. So on to ship number three, and that is 92, so 102. This one needed 50 or more. And then on to ship number four. That is six. <laughs> great, great. Um, yep, so we needed 70 or more. So otherwise you missed. So now we need an invasion roll. So once again, we have a plus 15. And that is 53. So 68 evasion. And if your, okay, evasion roll is 40 or more, your ship takes two damage. But our shield damage is one. So we only take, our ship takes one damage because that's how that shield works. However, that means that us as a character, because of our ship, whatever, it's, I don't even know what our total ship damage is that I can take right now, but I'm just going to make a tick mark. So we just take one and then our character also takes one. So there's that. I'm putting our character sheet back. Okay, so there was Monday's <laughs> stuff. So let's see what Tuesday brought here. So once again, we're just flying through and had to avoid some other ships who are in the dogfight. Okay, it looks like we finally kind of made it out and looks like we are either escaping planets or coming to some new planets. I like that color green. Okay, let's see what it says. You made it out of the firefight and have put a lot of distance between you and the lab where you were created. No one seems to have followed you. Perhaps the Admiral and the scientists that looked after you are dead. Maybe they escaped before the lab went up in flames. Where do you go next? You recall a picture of a lush planet that hung in the lab. It was Dr. Latimer's paradise. You looked at this picture every day of your life and dreamed of a lush and beautiful world outside of the prison you lived in. Perhaps you can find a place there. Okay. End of prologue. You have finished the introduction to the Void Spark Chronicles. The, remind the remainder of the story will continue, and you soon will have a chance to choose your own hero. This prologue did not touch on all of the elements of gameplay that you will encounter throughout the year. The remaining pages contain the rest of the complete rules. These should help you answer your questions, but you can always reach out to Sundial Games for further help at their website, which I have always linked down below. Also, I want to mention, if you're playing and you have any questions, or if you're playing any board game and have any questions, check out Board Game Geek. I'll link them down below. They are amazing. There's a lot of question and FAQ things on their forums. And anytime I have any question about any board game whatsoever, I will like Google search it and then add Board Game Geek and I can always find the information there. It's just a little easier to just type it into Google instead of searching through all of the different um, discussions under a board game on Board Game Geek because there's a lot of different things that can be talked about. But that site is also amazing. 
And I know that uh, Sundial Games is active on there as well. So let us just kind of move on and let's see what today's thing is. So Wednesday. So, ooh, okay. It looks like we are meeting someone. She's fun looking. Oh, I love it. Okay. Welcome aboard the Karnak. Let's get the unpleasantries out of the way first. This is my ship and I am in charge. We are a family while on board and we have fun here, but it all runs smoothly so long as you obey my orders when I give them. After a while, you may earn some clout, but until then, you listen to me or get ejected into the black, injected into the black of space. With that out of the way, I am Captain Kalis, and I am happy to have you on board. We hired you because we need the extra help. Now is your chance to prove your worth. Tell me about yourself. Okay. Now is your chance to select your hero that you will play as for the re remainder of the year. Take today to look over the characters presented throughout the next couple of pages and pick one. You may want to visit Sundial Games to view their higher levels or create your own. You will also find a sheet on the back of this page for tracking stats of the Karnak ship if you don't have the hero book. We do have the hero book, but I will show them to you in case you do not or you want to know what they look like. So, um, I'm just gonna pull these off so you guys can see them. Um, which kind of will spoil Thursdays, but I'm not gonna worry about it. So I'm just gonna pull this much off because, and I will kind of go show you what we've got here. So then, as you can see, now we're at Thursday, but we'll worry about that tomorrow when it's actually Thursday. So, the back of the sheet that I was reading from, this is our Karnak Starship sheet. So, this has all the information for Karnak. And then here are our characters. So, we have Jexiel Dubok. Um... Urzril Tox. He's a Hexian engineer. Um, she's a human cyborg. And then we've got Zerilla Tur, an Ezran mystic. Jake Soren, a Gavanite co pilot. Durgal Voss, a Gobrant smuggler. And Zuli Nyasa, Orkin Mech Trooper. Ooh, he's cool. Okay, so. Um. Oh, gosh. I kind of want to play the Mech Trooper. That sounds super fun. And he looks super cool. Let's see what his thing says. I am Zuli, bringer of death. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> no one in the galaxy would dare, dare challenge the organs after they cross me. Zuli is from a race of peaceful lizards, often hunted for sport, despite protective treaties. Once Zuli's eggs became infer infertile at a young age, she went against her people's customs. Instead of giving up her own life and body to feed young hatchlings, she sought another method to help her species. She, she purchased a battle mech and began protecting her clan from poachers. Despite her contributions, she was exiled for her violent methods that went against traditions. Yeah, I'm gonna be Zuli. I mean, bringer of death is a little much, but I'm 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 here. I'm kind of I'm kind of down for it. Let's see. And I'm I'm also kind of. Uh, let's see. I'm I was intrigued by the mystic. Let's see what the mystic says, and I'll decide between those. 
So Zorilla Tur, I am Zorilla. The ability to connect and manipulate the metaphysical is a rare gift in the galaxy. It is a myth in most cultures. These abilities are not restricted to any specific species. When such abilities do appear, they are often weak or show no real signs. Manifestations are often attributed to luck as most never learn to control them. This gift appeared in Zorilla at an early age when she killed her childhood friend with a mere thought. It was only an accident, but no one could ignore the strange things that happened around her. She was quickly outcast from society due to fear and even shunned by her own family. Researchers with the Zorian Labs eventually found her, paid off her parents, and took her to a lab for studies. She grew older and her powers grew stronger. She was trained as an elite and secret agent for the Zorian Empire's special forces. The Empire was toppled before she saw her first mission. You know what this is giving me vibes of? Jedi, Sith, Star Wars people, Force users, mixed with, oh uh, my gosh, I just lost her name from Firefly. The doctor's sister. I want to say Sunny, but I feel like that's not right. Oh my gosh. That's who it's making me think of. Sunday? I feel like it starts with an S. Hold, hold, please. I am like completely failing all of my nerd quizzes today. What is happening with my brain? Firefly. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I want to rewatch Firefly now. <laughs> Such a good show. Such a good show. I love it. River. Oh, her. The actress who plays River is Summer. <laughs> That's why I was thinking S. Her name is Summer Glow, but the character's name is River. <laughs> I was like, it's an S. Okay. So I'm getting that vibe. So I changed my mind. I'm going to go with her. I, I'm intrigued by the mystic. Let's just go full space opera. Like space sci-fi. I'm, I'm here for it. So I do have the hero book companion. So like was mentioned before, um, here is... A really fun layout so here's what the ship uh, I guess character sheet looks like um, in this book and then we've got our inventory here which we can take up and this is our equipment layout for our character and then so I'm gonna be the mystic which is great. So here's our mystic. This is the same exact information I just read from you, except instead of being on a little page, now we have level one of her here. And then when we have to level up, all of the, almost all of the level up stuff is added here. So we don't have to manually fix our character sheets. So this goes up to level six, which is the highest level we can go in this game. So yeah, we are going to be playing as... Zarilla Tur. I'm super excited. She looks super awesome. She kind of does have like a vibroblade kind of going on there. So that's fun. So yeah, that's our quest calendar. And I'm super excited that I, I, I kind of was expecting the prologue to go a little longer, but yeah, that's fine. I'm good. We got the basics of ship combat stuff, so that's perfect. That's really what I really wanted to see is the mechanics of doing the spaceship stuff. But I'm excited to move forward. So I'm going to stop rambling at you and I'm going to uh, set up my Romanceopoly board and then I will be back and we will do my roll and move to see what our next prompt is going to be. So I will see you in a minute. Hello, so we are back. I'm all set up here. I've got the kitty, as you can see, hanging out right here. I had to kind of set up around her this time. But here is my Romanceopoly board. And we are currently on BFF's house. So here is my little stone kitty that I'm using as my token. So BFF's house. Today I chose these two D6 pip style dice. 
I've got all of my cards. Oh, and I mentioned before when I did my first roll that the emergency services card, I could not find it. They did not put it in the printout. So I do not have the emergency services card, not because I lost it, but because it wasn't in the printable PDF. So I did reach out to them and let them know hey, the emergency services card is gone, but it's in all of the like digital journal and different journal and prompt lists. There just wasn't a card for it. So that's a little disappointing. I might try to jury rig one because I feel like I don't need to go take it back to get that one card professionally printed, but we'll just move on. So let's roll dice here. Okay, so we've got nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Paranormal Fang Alley. So let's see, I'm doing the more specific props. So let's see where we're at. Um, that's exciting. Okay, here we go. So, Fang Alley. Paranormal is the genre prompt, or the more specific prompt is read a paranormal where one of the main characters is a vampire. Ooh, yeah. So I have a few different vampire romances. I know on my TBR, I am a, I used to be a vampire girly for sure. Um, I'm trying to think... I wonder if the next Immortals After Dark book I have to read is a vampire one. If not, I might have to pick something else. But I know I have quite a few KU ideas, and the KU readathon is coming up at the end of the month. So maybe I'll try to pick up a vampire romance if I can kind of uh, mood read. However, I have read a lot of Paranormal this month already. And, oh, goodness, hi! I know you love to stand on board games, don't you? You say, hi, I'm a cheese boob. <laughs> yeah. Huh. I know. Um, but yeah, we will see. I will let you know once I pick it up. Um, oh my gosh, why are you rubbing your face on that? You are a cheese boob. So yeah, Fang Alley. I'm super excited to pick up the next book for Romance Landia or not romance opoly it might not be till february but we'll see what i have i want to at the end of the month once i can get through my remaining book club books try to see what i have for my fine may five main genre books to pick up and i think i'm gonna i think i need to pick up a fantasy i haven't read any fantasy this month yet so that might be what i'm leaning towards and this one is specifically a paranormal where one of the main characters is a vampire. So it's not just, although vampires are mostly in paranormal, but I feel like paranormal and fantasy sometimes cross boundaries a little bit. But yeah, I will let you know either way. And now I'm just kind of rambling on. So yay, second, second roll is done. Second prompt is selected. And I'm excited to just kind of keep chipping away at it a little bit at a time. And I will see you all tomorrow. Hello. Happy Thursday. Um, I just finished filming my Kindle Unlimited Readathon TBR video. Um, so check it out. I will link it up above. If it's out already, it's here. If you're watching this when this video is out and it's not up, I will link it up here when it is out, but I'm very excited for it. It will be January 26th through the 29th, so it's Thursday through Sunday. It'll be my first weekend in my new place. Tomorrow is officially move-in day, so we'll see what kind of happens. Um, I signed my lease today. Yeah, so fun things. I'm going to, um, I did not pick up Magic Tides last night because <laughs> by the time the game ended, I was exhausted and I just went to sleep. So, um, I did not read that. 
I might not, I might wait and try to read that this weekend because I have, um, it's super short, like I said, and the live shows on Monday. So I can read it Sunday night as a treat to myself after moving in all weekend. So I might just do wait and do that and try to read stuff off my Kindle. Um, but otherwise book news today at work, I finished Riv's Sanctuary by A.G. Wild. Um, the first book in her Riv Sanctuary series. And I enjoyed this. I am debating between giving it four and 4.5 stars. I might change it to 4.5, but I have it sitting at four right now. I enjoyed this. It was, it was kind of fun. Um, wasn't expecting it to be slow burn, but once we do get spicy, it's, there's a very fun mutual masturbation scene when they first kind of get into it. And there's a lot of really good tension once they kind of start realizing that it's, that's the type of tension that's between them. But yeah, it was definitely a slow burn, but I was here for it and I, I enjoyed my time and I'm very intrigued. There's two other books. We kind of get a hint. Um, Riv's brother is the second book and then we meet the hero of the third book. And I know this because the names of the books are the hero's names. Um, we meet him at the end of this book. So yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued to read more. All three books are available on my Hoopla. <sighs> So we'll see, but I enjoyed this one. Um, let's talk about all the prompts that I used this for. For Winter's Kiss board number two, I used this for over 200 pages. For Starbucks Quarterly Challenge, I used this for Iced Dirty Chai Latte, and that, and one of the options for that is set on a farm or a ranch. Technically, it's a sanctuary, but it's also kind of a farm, so, I mean, it kind of is close. He calls it a sanctuary, but it's pretty much a farm, let's be honest. Um, he's got animals that he has to take care of all the time. They spend all their time shoveling their poop and fertilizing the, tr the fruit trees, and it... It's like a hobby farm. He doesn't like sell things. He just takes care of the animals. So this worked for my new to you author challenge by Bookcase and Coffee because I have not read A.G. Wilde before and she has a fairly small backlist. So depending on what I think of the rest of the series, I might be working through her backlist somewhat soon. This also works for Read What You Own because this was a library book for me. For No Resolution January, this uh, I used for Start a New Book Before Finishing Your Current Read because I started this audiobook before I finished the ebook of House of Earth and Blood. And then for Gildathon, this worked for Technical, which is a sci fi or advanced technology book. And that's all it worked for. And I have, I think this is my fourth Hoopla checkout of the month. Maybe fifth, but I'm very close to hitting my goal of five hoopla checkouts a month for, and it's only January, but I'm starting out strong and that is always a plus. So yeah, that I read that. I'm not sure what I'm going to pick up. I might try to pick up a historical audio book, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm in the mood for. Um, there isn't really anything audiobook wise that I want to pick up soon, although I have a couple Kindle books that I need to read and I'm running out of time, so I might have my Lexi try to read one of the Kindle books to me. I might, go, I might go that way so I can still get my official TBR books done and then I can kind of free up some some other reading space going on which might help with me having more time to moon read once we hit the kindle on the midrin readathon but i don't know and we'll decide once i actually start like finalizing packing the rest of the, like the rest of my clothes and stuff because i got most of it packed but i left out like most of my camisoles and half of my sweaters because i didn't know what i was gonna wear and but yeah, now I just have to leave out two days of stuff. So that's a lot easier. So yeah, I'll let you know. Um, I did get another thrift books package today. So this is one of the two remaining packages that are coming from my Mary Jo Putney order. So let's see what today's is. 
So this is Angel Rogue. Ooh, another shiny one. Oh my gosh, I was taking the thrift book stickers off of the shiny ones yesterday and it was taking off the metallic sheen. So then the color was missing where the sticker was and I was so sad. This one looks kind of cracked, but another shiny one. And let's see, it looks like we got the step back on this one. Ooh. Oh, I like that. Oh, it's a Pinot. I can't tell if she's sitting on a well or if it's just like a little. I don't know. Shelf or like short wall or something like that. Garden wall. I don't know, but it's gorgeous. I love the flowers. I love that they're in the garden. Oh, I'm very excited. I'm guessing this is a part of her Fallen Angels series because I think all the books I got were either from the Fallen Angels series or from the Silk Trilogy. So yeah, I'm very excited to have another one and it came with a step back. So this one has all sorts of stickers though. We've got that one up there. We've got the thrift books one. There's one over here. That's kind of disappointing, but I'll try to be careful with them. Um, at least the ones that are on the shiny parts on the front and on the side, but otherwise let's do the quest calendar. Um, and I did decide when I was driving on, um, home today, I am going to do today's, so Thursdays, and I'm going to do tomorrow Fridays so I can just pack it up tonight and then I won't have to really worry about doing it until Sunday night or later because that's been my thing lately here. So... And then tomorrow, my Friday clip will be just talking about whatever books I might have read or whatever audiobooks I might have finished or something and whatever might happen tomorrow. I don't know how much I'm moving in tomorrow, if I might try to wait and do a lot on Saturday, but there's a lot going on. But I will at least film a clip on Friday to close out the vlog at that point, so... Here is Thursday. So yesterday we picked our character. So let's see. We've been hired for a mission and should be arriving shortly. Your skills could prove useful for the task at hand. Until then, you may be of service to the rest of the crew. We are shorthanded and need everyone on board to fulfill many roles. Go around and meet with the others on the ship. See if you can aid them in their duties. Credits are the currency used throughout the Zenula Prime Galaxy. Determine your starting credits you'll begin with on your journey. Roll 3d6 and record this as your current credits. Okay. Okay. So I will flip to my cactus sheet. Cool. Alright, 3d6. So I will pull out the d6 that came with the set from this. So we will roll it three times. So six, ooh, starting out strong. Six, four, so 10, and another four. So 14 total. And I'm intrigued. They changed the lamination on the hero book from last year, and they also changed the markers that they gave. They got a different kind of marker, so. I'm intrigued to see they're supposed to not smear off as easier, but still kind of be easier to clean. Okay, so we'll see how this goes. All right, so we are starting off with 14 credits, and there is a black marker and a red marker that came with the hero books. So, and it also looks like there's a little cleaning microfiber cloth in there. Okay, so let's that's it for today's nothing else and the pages before this were the character sheets so there's really nothing on the back of those pages that we need to worry about so we're gonna go ahead and jump ahead like i said for fridays okay so it looks like we're gonna be doing some training here oh i did also want to mention um on my character sheet I have a note here at the end of the 2022 calendar there was a sundial item which is fun because this is made by sundial games but um I made a note so I just stuck my sticky note in here on my character but um having that item it doesn't take up an item slot but it it gives us one attack one damage 
um, one more to our health and one more to our defense. So I have that note here to kind of remind me what we have, that we get those bonuses because we played last year's calendar, which is super fun. But anyway, back to what we're doing today. I'm the first mate, Bro Brokvar, and I need your assistance in the training room. I'd like to get an idea of your combat abilities to see how useful you would be in the field. Defend yourself against the onslaught of training bots. If you do well, we will work together soon enough. So Brokvar, that is our first, first mate? Yep, first mate. Cool, he's cool looking. Kind of dinosaur-y orky. So we will be rolling attack and damage for four different bots, but one round each. So our damage is a d12 plus one, and our attack is a plus four. So I will get out my d12 and my d20. Perfecto. Alrighty, so let's get to it. Alright, so, attack roll for bot number one is a 13, so, what was I said, plus four, so 17. Okay, nine or more, and you hit the bot. Okay, so damage is, a, is that a four or a nine? I think that's a four, so five <laughs> total damage. Okay, if your damage roll is four or more, the bot is destroyed. So just barely. Okay, on to bot number two. And that is a 12. Okay, so 16 to hit. And this one, if your attack roll is eight or more, you hit the bot. So damage roll for that one is a two. So three damage there. And we needed five or more, so he was not destroyed. Destro destroyed. Um, so our defense is a 12. If our defense is 12 or more, reduce your health by one. So we will take one hit point damage. I like to just do tick marks. So we will do that. Okay, on to bot number two. All right, uh, that is a 18, so 22 to attack, and we needed 10 or more to hit the bot. So then damage, roll well this time. That is an 8, nice, better. Um, so 8 plus 1, so 9 damage on bot number 3, and we needed 4 or more to destroy it, so perfect. And then on to our final bot, bot number 4 is a 1, a 1. These dice do not like me. Yes, they roll well sometimes, but I feel like more often than not, we get bad rolls. Um put it in dice timeout. My goodness, I might have to switch to the metal dice I bought to go with this. I might have to switch to the little tiny metal dice. Uh, so yeah, we don't hit because we needed nine or more and we rolled a one. So <laughs> our defense is 12. So we uh, take one hit point of damage again. Alrighty, so... If you destroyed two bots, collect two credits. Perfect. So we will up our credits by two. You didn't do too bad. I will be glad to have someone else watching my back when things go bad. Not that it should happen regularly, but times are crazy now and you never know. All right. So that's what I have for you. That is where I'm at. Um, and that is Friday. So we are done with the quest calendar for the week. And like I said, I will film a clip tomorrow letting you know about official moving day and all of that but yeah I'm gonna try to pack up the rest of what I can tonight um and go from there so I will see you all tomorrow and I hope you have a good Friday <music>
Hello. Happy Friday. I am doing my update. I am currently in my new place, as you can tell from all the boxes. I did not read very much, like at all, today so far. I do plan on trying to read a little bit later tonight during the Avalanche game while I re relax and recuperate from today's loads for tomorrow. Um, but I did start a more a by Kimberly Knight yesterday and I'm 12% in so not much has happened and I don't really know what's going on yet so um it looks like childhood friends to stop talking to each other and now they're running into each other and they run into each other at a sex club which is kind of weird in LA but I think they're from Tennessee or somewhere out east so who knows what's going on but I will talk about it more once I have read more than 12% but I just wanted to say hey look and kitchen sorry for the horrible lighting but living room I did show a little thing earlier today as well but once things are set up, you will definitely see more of what's going on in the background. And maybe I'll do an apartment tour if you're interested. So definitely let me know. I plan on at least doing a bookshelf tour. But yeah, so that's it. I'll show you my pretty kitchen again. It's, it's, it's pretty big. And this is a two bed, two bathroom, which is super great. And yeah, Ooh, there we go, better light. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for new apartment stuff coming in the following week. It takes me very little time to unpack and get things settled, so it wouldn't surprise me if I'm mostly unpacked by this weekend. But if you'd like to leave me a comment down below, feel free. If you'd like to just leave an emoji, leave me something that reminds you of moving either boxes or that guy walking or whatever you would like to. But otherwise, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you very soon.